Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this budget deck guide video, I'm going to take a look at Budget Elemental Shaman. Elemental Shaman is a pretty sweet deck at the moment, it's performing really well. The budget version unfortunately isn't quite as strong. I was able to have a slightly above 50% win rate during my climb with this deck. So it's a playable deck, it's still a fine deck, it can challenge all of those full cost lists. It's not quite as good as the full cost version. The overall game plan of the deck is the same as the focused version. You have stuff like Kindling Elemental, Veiling Vapor, you play on turn 1, and you go from there to Gage Mask Custodian. Gage Mask Custodian gives you a Wackanol Hammer. With your Wackanol Hammer, you're able to buff up the minions that you have on the board, and it's really a mid range style deck. You typically play one or two cards per turn, just better and better cards, bigger threats, gaining control of the game, and eventually winning it. Early in the game, you really want to think about how to use your Kindling Elemental. Because sometimes, like you have Veiling Vapor, Kindling Elemental, you could do Kindling Elemental, Veiling Vapor on 1, but if you do that, then what do you do on turn 2? You really need to consider what's most important to you. Because sometimes also Kindling Elemental enables you to play Arid Stormer or Guy Worm on turn 2, and that can really start gaining that board control. Because Arid Stormer and Guy Worm on 2 are very effective at trading away whatever the opponent has on the board at that point. You also have some direct damage spells in the deck, and these are multi-use cards. You can use these for board control, and you can use these to go face. Lightning Bolt is more of a card that you want to use in later in the game. Go face with that. Sometimes you use it for board control too, but mainly that's just some extra reach. Serpent Shrine Portal is already more multi-purpose because it also summons a minion, so you generally do want to use it. You kill something on the board, gain good board control, get a minion on the board. And Dunk Tank, if you're able to corrupt it, it can be great for gaining control of the board, but you can't always get that corrupted, and you can use it to go face. You can sometimes even use it to deal 4 damage and remove minion from the board to make your board stick. All of those options are available. The difference between the budget list and the full cost list is mainly that the budget list lacks Lilipad Lurkers, and that is really unfortunate, because Lilipad Lurker is a crazy strong card. I tried a bunch of options on what to replace Lilibet Lurker with, and the only one that really worked decently was Earth Elemental. Earth Elemental is a huge taunt minion, and it's actually pretty good against stuff like Face Hunters, against stuff like Aggro Shamans. In those matchups, it can even be better than the Lilibet Lurker. But then, when you're, for example, in the Mirror matchup, Lilibet Lurker is so much better. I actually came to the conclusion that you can't play around Lilipad Lurker in the mirror when you're playing the budget version. You just slam your Earth Elemental down and hope they don't have the Lilipad Lurker. Because if you play your Earth Elemental and they hex that, then that's typically game. But on the other hand, if you play your Earth Elemental and they don't have a Lilipad Lurker for that, then the deck doesn't have much to answer it with. The full cost mirror is more strategic because it's a little bit of game of cat and mouse. Who commits first? Who gets a swing turn with Lilipad Lurker? That sort of strategy is involved. But when you're playing this budget list against the full cost list, you just can't afford to do that. Likewise, this budget list doesn't include Instructor Fireheart, but Instructor Fireheart is not played in all full cost lists either. Alakir and Alexstrasza are a perfectly fine couple. Sometimes you use those, sometimes you replace one or the other with Fireheart, depending on your personal preferences. And that's pretty much it. That's the full cost list, so it's not a very expensive list. All you need to do is craft two Lilibet Lurkers and you can have a full cost stack. As for the mulligans with this deck, you're always looking for your Kindling Elemental, Veiling Vapor, Gage Mask Custodian, really important cards. If you have a Kindling Elemental, you can consider keeping a 3-drop so that you can play Kindling Elemental on 1 into a 3-drop on 2. That's usually the average Stormer, that's the better 3-drop generally. And if you're up against some tokens, typically something like Face Hunter for example, Earth Revenant can be a good keep because Face Hunter has a lot of 1 health minions. There are not a lot of decks in the meta right now that have one health minions, but Face Hunter is one of those, and Earth Revenant is splendid in such scenarios. Now, let's go take a look at Budget Elemental Shaman in action, and if you enjoy this content, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Let's give this a go. Up against the Paladin. That is rare. You don't see Paladins very often. The best performing Paladin list right now is the Nezot list. And I don't have the Hex effect. The regular Elemental Shaman would of course have two copies of the Hex effect. Be particularly good against the Nezot list. Probably spending coin on one to get a Cage Mask Custodian out there. Every Paladin deck runs Secret, so there will be... There will be Galloping Savior, so I don't want to play three cards in a single turn, most likely. May the 
light grant you peace. I believe this will be a coin cage match custodian for the card draw. And of Adal currently only gives the minion one health, so instead of them having a tree tree here that I can't answer, they would only have a tree two, which I could. Okay, so far so good. We we'll play the menacing Nimbus next. Get an arcane anomaly. Well, I'm not really going to casting spells here anyway. Oof, that's that's tough. Be difficult to answer, isn't it? Well, they have oh my yog, galloping savior, reckoning. It's kind of like the package there. I believe this is an arid storm a turn. Then we do it like this. So this survives at two health. So far, so good. I cannot wait to read this. They're running the Librem version. Okay. Minor surprise. Nothing too bad yet, though. An old hammer. Into that one. Ah, but now they have the reckoning, right? They might have a reckoning there. Ah, yes. Look about the re possibility of reckoning. Oh, um, we'll play that so that we keep the keep the synergies going. Helping Saber and Omayo are almost guaranteed to be the other secrets there. Clipperms are getting a little annoying, are they not? Yep, they are, they are. It's gonna be an Earth Revenant turn. It'll be an Earth Elemental turn. I think it's an Earth Elemental turn. That elemental killed their poisonous minion there. So we have an 8 9 note elemental. Obviously, they have the Librum of Justice in that deck, which they might be able to use effectively here. We already saw the Reckoning, and they usually don't run two copies of that. We we'll get to whack them in the face a little bit here. But they're getting closer to the Liberum of Hope. Which will be very annoying. They have the Omayog. So the first spell that I play will be countered. Eleven, I would need another nine damage. I don't have another 9 damage here. Are they going for the Liberum of, Liberum of Hope next turn? Don't have another 9. Liberum of Hope is quite likely coming. It heals them right up. I'll do it like this for now. Liberum of Hope still takes all of their mana. It takes them to 13. I cannot wait to read this. But what good is it to go to 13? Okay, can I kill them? I we're about to find out. Now the Oh My Yoke happens. What does the Omayok do? That's the key question now. That did nothing. Blended. That just leaves the Paladin dead. Okay. Earth Elemental was quite an instrumental card. 
in pulling off that victory. That's the story. So no, you don't gain that rank that easily. Because your win rate doesn't change very much, no matter how bad players you face. And the, ma and the matchmaking rating system doesn't account for that probably. And we have superb evidence about that. Because of the way they messed up with the matchmaking system once. Alright, so is that a razor bore? No, that was a razor bore. A little sad, of course. I will need to kill it and hope they don't pick up anything great from it. Well, I will kill that one too. So that should then be the Beastmaster. It's very unlikely that they would have another two drop because that deck really doesn't run a lot of two drops. That was very unlikely. But obviously it's possible. That's Primal Dungeon here, isn't it? Nature waits for no one but me. Let's just go and face twice now. I don't think there's reason for me to kill that razor ball. I was trying to block them off the board. Because getting two two drops with that deck is insanely rare. I know because I played that deck so much. But okay, we'll see. I'm just curious about that card that was kept because it should have been a Razor Boar or a Beastmaster. And both Razor Boars were drawn. Not kept in the mulligan. I grow impatient. Hell Rattler is strong. That one and the hero power enables them to keep the razor bore on the board. Okay. Enables them to do that, but at the cost of taking some damage. Let's get a random elemental here. Well, that's totally useless. I'll play the Gimbling. They might take a value trade here. But I'm also considering just the phase plan. I already saw one of their Death's Head Cultists. Okay. I'm totally considering a phase plan. 6, that put them to 15. And then I would have another 9 from hand. Another 13 from hand now. The Inquisitor costs 6. It cannot be... I mean, it can be played, but... Yeah, so I think we're just going... I'm, we're not going pure face here. We're still killing that one. Using this to hit face. Okay. We may have some rush minions to kill this, but... Most rush minions don't deal 5 immediately, like Felrata deals 4. Whoa! That was solid. That was very, very good. Ouch. Sorry, I did not see that coming. I have to admit, I did not see that coming. I just didn't see it. Well, maybe they don't have the Inquisitor. Let's see. A 7 from hand. Inquisitor would be a problem. Oh, that one. It's a big, big one. Okay. That's 14 damage. There's a lethal setup over two turns. Unless they roll lifesteal from the ectoplasm. This is getting really interesting. One out of eight to roll lifesteal from the ectoplasm. Or if they have a second Tormentor. Second Tormentor is an out. 
They can't use the Inquisitor now, they don't have a discount anymore. They need a second Tormentor or healing. That does not bring any healing. Because like Death at Cult is this irrelevant, because I can just kill them from hand. Okay, a little bit of a scary game. But in the end. Shaman prevails. Because randomness is good. Ow. Have my weapon ready. I might keep the primal dungeon here when I have the cage match. Yeah, I will need the resources. Let's see. Mitch Mulligan to everything this time. Always nice. Wound up going to the dome. That's the spirit. It's the good old mage spirit right there. The cage match, draw the Wakanol Hammer. Next turn I'm playing the Stormer to get a threat out there that the mage will have to respond to. Now Mage will need some kind of response to this. They cannot just leave it up. Mage has plenty of tools to respond though. But they might be able to do so. Not bad, not bad. I want another one. Do I want to spend the coin is the question. If I spend the coin I can't do like with an all hammer. I'll spend the coin for another cage match too. This obviously means that the Wakano is not guaranteed the Tarid Stormer. But this also makes some of the mage spells a little weaker. I've been able to draw a lot, so their odds of finding some of those devolving missiles is increasing. Now I can't really play the Earth Elemental because of the risk of... Hmm. Can I do a guy of one? If there's an entity. I think it has to be the Wakanol Hammer. No Ice Barrier. I've landed on the wrong minion, but that's acceptable. I'll do it like this. Okay. Counterspell ended in at the Wind Portal always is a lie. All of those remain options. They could find an Apex Seize Blast to kill this with, but can they roll a taunt from it? They can. That's sad, because that's exactly the card that I didn't want them to roll. And now I don't have the Gaia Worm active. That's a bit of a bummer. There is an Oasis ally. And to do so much good for them. Well, we hit here and see if there's an Oasis ally. There's no Oasis ally. Okay. What if it's an entity? We can give them a Primal Dungeon here, that's fine. Nature waits for no an entity? Wakanol no Hammer. I can probably get rid of quite a few minions now. Let's take a look at the hammer. These are going to the dome. Put the mage down to 14 health. Properly played, there should be enough time for me to kill the mage. That animation takes ages. Hi, big fan. Well, I'm happy that you're having, still having a good time here. We'll counter spell Netherwind Portal. What is it going to be? I want to overload this turn. But then I will be free of overload on 9 for Alex Straza. I need to play an elemental so the guy worm is active next turn. This lightning bolt tries to go face. 
That was the Netherwind portal. 789 damage there. Okay. Now I might be able to set up lethal for next turn already. Okay. Play this one. Alright. I have a 9 damage there. So the mage doesn't have the damage to kill me this turn. They will still need to clear the board. Their biggest hope is to find a ring toss and find an ice barrier from that. But that costs mana. They haven't had the discounts. That just leaves them dead. Just that just leaves them dead. And that's a dead mage. Nice. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please click the like button, subscribe to my channel, and check out my Twitch channel.